Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for your patience. Uh, my name is Otis Threet, and welcome to our Lanier Leadership Series. Today, you are here from Chris Womack with the Southern Company as he discusses corporate giving during COVID-19. We were here from Will and Bryant following the message from one of our sponsors, which is which is the Southern Company. Energy is like the human spirit, transformative and resilient. For over a hundred years, we've embraced change and innovation to deliver the energy you count on, to serve our customers and communities no matter what, because we believe resilient people make resilience possible. By working together, we can build a better future. Southern Company. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here today. I have the pleasure of introducing Chris Womack. Chris is the Executive VP and President of External Affairs for the Southern Company. Uh, Womack directs the company's public policy strategies and oversees the company's government and regulatory affairs, corporate communication initiative, and other external strategies business engagement. Chris is a native of Greenville, Alabama. Prior to joining the Southern Company, Chris worked on Capitol Hill. Chris holds a bachelor degree from Western Michigan University and a master's degree from the American University. Womack currently chairs the board of the East Lake Foundation and is on the national board of the First T and Communities in School. He has chaired the Atlanta Convention and Visitor Bureau Board and the Atlanta Sports Council and has served as a member of the Children Health Care of Atlanta Board, among others. Chris has been recognized as one of the most influential African-Americans in the United States. He has received several awards. One is the National Whitney M. Young Award for his public service. Chris is not only a mentor, but he's also a friend. Please join me to welcome Chris Womack. In addition, if you have, once you have your questions, please, put all your questions in the Q&A. Chris? William, thank you very much. And Otis, thank you guys for, for extending this invitation to me. Um, it's, a, it's a very interesting time, as, as we all know, things that we are experiencing. As we go through this period of COVID, as we go through this time of racial injustice and racial unrest, as we think about the, the November elections and all the voting issues uh, that we have already dealt with and expect to deal with uh, as we get to November. And then on the, as we currently now go through this period of mourning with the loss of C.T. Vivian, uh, John Lewis, and the brother of Mega Evers, uh, Charles Evers, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting period in time that um, that that we're in and from a southern company's perspective and and i'll do a couple of things today i'll talk to you from some of the things and challenges we're facing inside the company uh, but i'll also speak to you uh, somewhat from a perspective particularly as it deals with race and some of the other issues that we're addressing uh, kind of from a company perspective but also from a personal reflection we, uh, as you saw our ad, we are an energy utility company and we provide uh, electric and gas service uh, in the Southeast, as well as in, in Virginia, Chicago, Chicago, outside of Chicago and in and, and parts of Tennessee. So when COVID hit, uh, we left and, and began to work remotely for many of our employees around March 12th, March 13th. Um, but because of the nature of our business, uh, it is important that we continue to always be on and that we continue to make sure that we're able to, to maintain the service that our customers expect. And so many of our line crews, many of our operating plant uh, personnel 
uh, we had to invoke uh, new procedures to make sure we were um, maintaining safety, um, maintaining social distancing, doing all the hygiene things, making sure that we could continue to make sure that electricity and gas was flowing, energy was on, even in this period of COVID and this period of the pandemic. I'll tell you, I mean, it got around Easter time and, and you know, our business, there are always a lot of weather conditions that we have to contend with. And we had a major storm come through, tornadoes and and one of the things we do, we, we kind of put, put, we put crews together and yeah, they work very closely together. So it was a challenge for us to figure out how to operate and restore service in this new protocol. Uh, I will say to you that we did it successfully, uh, maintaining the safety of our workforce, uh, but also restoring safety very quickly to our customers. So it has been a lot of different experiences uh, for us as we, as we run, run our business. And I would say to you, many of the metrics and measurements and goals that we set for ourselves in terms of how we run the business, I'm pleased to say that we're still on track to meet our goals uh, and that our standards and, and service conditions have, have not declined because of COVID and because of the pandemic. Uh, that is something we have to con continually work on uh, to make sure we have the resources uh, making sure our people are, are, are being safe and being focused because our business can, in fact, be dangerous. Uh, so we preach a lot of safety as we carry out our business. One other thing that, that has happened because as, as much of the economy um, shut down and locked down, uh, many bars, restaurants, uh, malls, uh, the business was a little different. And so as a result, Electricity use uh, was different than we uh, normally expect. And yes, that put strain on us from a, from a budget standpoint to say, yes, we have to be more prudent. We have to be more, we have to be leaner as we operate this company because of the uncertainty of the pandemic and what it would do to revenue caused us to, to look at some things a lot different and make some decisions on things that we could continue to do but also things that we had to say, we have to put this to the, to, uh, to the side and, and not do it this year. Uh, and that also impacted our, our giving and some of our investments in, in the community. And so for some of you who, who may have received funding um, from us or some of our operating companies in the past, uh, you may have gotten messages and, and communications that things may in fact be, be somewhat different uh, as, as we, reassess our budgets and, and, and figure out what we can do, uh, making decisions to say, this is not something we can afford to do at this time. At the same time, I will say to you, as we move through, and as we move through the period post the, uh, the killing of, of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Rashard Brooks, and all the attention and the protesting and the marching that, that occurred uh, post those events and the attention that it brought to racial injustice and racial uh, racism and racial injustice, it also challenged us to say, yes, we have to be, be careful and be, be very prudent and be very efficient with our budgets. But it also speaks to us to say that it's important for us to make sure that we are making good and wise investments in our community. Let me speak to you uh, somewhat about some of the things that we have been doing inside of our company as it relates to, to race, racism, and racial injustice. We have approached this in a very therapeutic way uh, in terms of initially providing forums and encouraging people to talk uh, because there has been and there is a lot of anger. Uh, we as Black people know that we have faced this struggle, we have faced this wrath of discrimination uh, for many years, go back to our ancestors some 400 years. And so many of us have gotten to the point and many of us inside of our company said, enough is enough. Uh, but we had to uh, provide forums for our employees, both black and white, uh, to express their anger. At the same time, we had to also afford, many, particularly many of our white colleagues, many of our white friends to, to listen and to learn and also to self-reflect, to say, what does all this mean to them and what it is they must do? So we've been on a, a, I think, a wonderful therapeutic listening tour in, 
and having wonderful dialogues across the company about the issue of race. Talking about race inside of an organization like ours is not real comfortable. Uh, it's just not something that, that, that people are necessarily comfortable in discussing. But many of us think that in order for us to, to achieve the kind of change that we think is necessary at this time, we must have these uncomfortable conversations, uh, these uncomfortable discussions if we want to advance and move forward. And we continue to have these dialogues and take this feedback and use, those, use that feed, feedback as guideposts and guidance to say, what is it we as a company must do? I firmly believe, and I say it inside the company, I, I think the changes that, that this country and our communities must make around the issue of race and racial injustice, I think the business community must, take a, must make, have a leadership role in making these kind of changes and leading these conversations. Can we leave this to the government? Can we leave this to politicians? I don't think so. I think we in, inside the business community must have strong voices, must, must be very loud about things that, that must change. And those are the kind of conversations um, that we're having inside of our company from the top of the house involved with the CEOs of our business units, uh, this chairman and CEO of Southern Company, as well as uh, throughout the ranks of our company making sure we're having uh, difficult conversations, but also just deciding and determining things that we must do uh, to make sure we are improving conditions uh, and, and, and making conditions better. We sent out some communications last week that outlined a number of commitments that, that, that we're making and that laid out some aspirations that we want to focus on inside the company, involving additional hiring and involving additional representation on our board as well as uh, throughout the ranks of our company, but also making investments in distressed and disadvantaged communities, doing more business with uh, black businesses as well as other racial minorities, uh, making sure we, we're making, uh, establishing strong partnerships with uh, equal justice and, 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 and organizations that focus on social justice. Uh, but also, as I said, uh, making investments in distressed and disadvantaged communities, and then aligning. I mean, we're very, very, very involved politically, making sure that our political engagement align with, with the values of our company. One of the things that I worry about as we talk about race inside of our company is that it simply becomes a, it becomes very episodic uh, because you know, in this Twitter society that we live in, uh, our attention spans are very short and very limited. And if we aren't careful, this will be something that we will be angry about uh, for a couple of days or a couple of weeks. But uh, as the next issue uh, crops up, we'll move on to something else and we will put this to the side. That is one of the commitments and the things that we're speaking to very loudly is that this is not a simple event. This is a journey that we're on and so we're also putting some commitments in place to make sure that we are establishing meaningful goals and metrics, that we are uh, identifying appropriate benchmarks and that we will do regular reporting, uh, but also make a statement on an annual basis in terms of things that we've done and progress we're making to make sure that we're holding ourselves accountable internally, but also speaking externally about things that we are doing. This must be a journey. This must be a process. This must be a process that, just like every other business metric we focus on, this is right there along with those metrics to make sure that we're staying committed uh, to, this, to this journey and to our, what we call uh, race moving to equity in terms of making sure that, that we're all Black employees in our company are being treated fairly. And one of the things we say, and we speak to it very directly, that if we get this right with our black employees, that this will also benefit other people of color, uh, other people with different lifestyles. Uh, this will pe uh, make the company better for everybody. So we are moving forward and we'll continue to move forward in, in a very aggressive way to make sure uh, we are addressing uh, this issue of race as we face all of the various challenges that, that, that we continue to embrace. I would also say to you, uh, and I don't know if you watched, many of you watched the ceremony and, 
and John Lewis's body being placed in the rotunda of the Capitol on yesterday. I grew up in South Alabama, not far from where John Lewis was born in Troy, Alabama. The first cotton I picked was probably about 15 miles from where John Lewis uh, was born and raised. And he and I would talk about Alabama and our love for Alabama, our frustration with Alabama in so many ways that, as, as it relates uh, to race. But it's, I think it also, but it speaks to us to say when we lose the voices and the leadership of a C.T. Vivian and his eloquence and his commitment to, uh, to racial justice uh, and the confrontations that he led and, and the voice that he brought about for change and the things that Congressman Lewis did. And when you see them passed at this, um, in the same week, it says to us that they have, they've served a good fight. They fought a good fight. But now it's up to us, no matter where we are and what kind of organization we're in. I mean, we may not be in, in, in the social justice movement of protesting and marching in the streets on a daily basis. We may be in boardrooms and courthouses and, and different buildings and, and different rooms. But we must carry, we must take up the torch. We must keep marching. We must keep fighting for equality, for equity, for racial justice, uh, for us as black people, but also be a role model for other minorities who, who may also face similar challenges. We must give over ourselves. And that's, the, um, that's some of the things that, that I really focus on today. At Southern Company, we made an announcement in, at the end of January, we made a commitment of, of, of $50 million to historical black colleges and universities. Uh, because, I mean, as many of you has, have, have heard these conversations before in different businesses and in different industries, and we do a lot of work in Silicon Valley and with different VC funds and, and investment firms, and diversity there is not what it needs to be. And many times, many responses I get, I view them as excuses, uh, but I also have to receive them in some objective sense to, to listen and to learn, they will say, we can't find people. We can't find black folks to, to, uh, to join our companies, whether it be Google, whether it be Netflix or some other VC firm. And so we decided to, to make this commitment to historical black colleges and universities and make an available $50 million that we want to use as leverage uh, to turn that $50 million into a much bigger number to partner with these colleges to make sure they are providing the, 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 uh, the curriculum that, that promotes innovation and technology so that as their students graduate, they're, they're equipped to go join these, these VC, these Silicon Valley firms. I am so pleased to see what has happened since our announcement. And as you have watched the news, you've seen a number of companies who've made commitments to HBCUs. Uh, Reed Hastings and his family made a major $40 million gift, I think 40, maybe a little bit more, to Morehouse and Spelman. Uh, uh, Dominion Resources, another energy company uh, headquartered in Richmond, Virginia, made a commitment some $35 million, uh, historically black colleges and universities. JP Morgan has made a similar commitment. So the, the efforts and the activities I think are starting and the work is being done. Our challenge is now is to make sure that, that those commitments are delivered upon and that we hold organizations accountable for these commitments that they are making in the heat of the battle. That once we pass this period, uh, that those commitments are not forgotten. And so we'll continue to collaborate with, with different businesses and different companies uh, to lever up our dollars uh, to make a strong commitment and partner with uh, these colleges and universities. Because we know as students graduate from HBCUs, many of them uh, may be first time family graduates. We can change their lives. We can change their families' lives. We can change conditions. And so it's important for us to make these kinds of investments. And so as we go through this period of so many things that are, that are uncertain, you know, when do we return to the office? When do we all gather again 
at a Beyonce concert? When do we all gather again uh, at a football game, at your favorite college football game? Uh, when do we all gather again at church? Uh, so many things are, are so different and can make us all somewhat depressed. I think we use this period to, to recommit ourselves to being better, better and view the glass as being half full. Use it as a period for introspection in terms of things in my life that I can be better at. Make sure my physical condition is better. Make sure I'm reading and learning and studying that my learnings are different and I'm better. I'm learning something, whether I learn a new language, uh, whatever, but using this period to be better. Not come out of this period the same as I was when I went in. That is a challenge that I make into myself, challenge I make to my family, and a challenge I will say to each one of you. I mean, how will you come out of this pandemic? Will you be the same person that you were when you went into isolation sometime in March? Whenever we come out, whether it's uh, at the end of the year or who knows, it may be the middle of 2021, but we'll be better people. We will commit ourselves to being better. We will pick up the torch. We will carry the baton of the C.T. Vivians, of the John Lewis's, or the Mega Evers, that we will commit ourselves to racial injustice and, and, and racial equality, that we will continue to do our jobs and do our work and make our organizations better. We're the ones who now must make the change, must, must lead the change, must make situations better. We have no excuses. Too much is given, much is expected. And we have been blessed with so much. And so many of our brothers and sisters, as we know, have not been as fortunate as some of us. And we must give back and we must help. We must do all we can uh, to make this world and make our communities a lot better. I can go on. Uh, this is an interesting time for me, but it's also a very challenging, interesting, and motivating time for me. So I will stop there and see what questions you may have. And William and Otis, I'm not sure that's what you were wanting from me, uh, but that's kind of what I had on my heart this morning to share as we have this conversation. Uh, but I'm glad to take uh, any questions that, that some of you may have. So with that, uh, I'll open it up for questions. Okay, good morning. This is Renee Dubois. Uh, thank you, Mr. Womack, for um, taking time out of your schedule to spend time with us. We do have a few questions that came in prior. Um, the first question is, what can nonprofits do to continue cultivation, uh, cultivating corporate relationships during COVID-19 and all that's going on with race relations? I think nonprofits, I mean, I mean, you're doing wonderful work. You're doing great things. The challenge now is that companies and, and, and businesses are, like I said, their business models and, and, and their, their environments are somewhat different. And so their resources are, are limited and not what they once were. And I know we as a company, we are being more focused and more deliberate in terms of our giving. Uh, so yeah, there will be some things that we won't do this year. At the same time, there will be some things that we will probably do more of. Some, 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 some focuses we will make bigger commitments to. Yes, we've made uh, major commitments, like I said, to historical black colleges and universities. We've also made some major commitments to the National Urban League, and we've made some major commitments to the Equal Justice Initiative. I think you as nonprofits uh, must come in and talk to us and tell your story and your conditions and what contribution and what value you're making and how you are, whether you got PPP funding, whether you got CARES Act dollars, but what are you doing to sustain yourself? And we may not be able to give you what we've given you before, but how can you, we give you a dollar, you lever that with some other, some other, some other investment from some other organization. Uh, we all have to be a little more creative than we ever have been before. Yes, you've got to be, I know many of you are operating very efficiently now and and operating on shoestrings. So it's very difficult for you to say, I can reduce any further. Uh, but I think understanding that our resources are less than they were, say, a year ago. 
and understanding we're operating with greater, greater constraints, understanding that, being sensitive to that, uh, but, but being willing to have creative conversations with us about how we can help you. It may not be this year, but it may be next year or, or the year following and see how we can collaborate and partner in one way or the other. That's my, that's my thoughts today. Okay, thank you. We have a question in the chat asking, um, who and I guess how will be, who will be responsible for keeping a scorecard on the commitment to the HBCUs? Um, I approach it a couple of different ways. I mean, we'll do internal benchmarking and internal reporting, uh, but also one of the elements is to have some external audit work done to come in and, and, and see how we're doing. Uh, because we can sometimes get locked in our own blinders and think we're wonderful, think we're all cute and handsome. Um, I think we have to challenge ourselves to, to have somebody else look at us from a more objective uh, perspective to say, are we as cute as we think we are? So yeah, we, we have to hold ourselves accountable. Uh, and and when, I, and when I talk about reporting, it's, it's reporting internally, but also sharing reports ex externally with individuals to, to demonstrate that we're living up to the commitments we made. Uh, that's important uh, because words are, words are very easy. Uh, and commitments are a bunch of words until you uh, d deliver on the outcomes and, and you deliver on the actions. And it's important that we hold our own selves accountable, but it's also important that we express our, our accountability uh, externally to the colleges and universities, but also the communities uh, where we live and operate. Okay, great. We have another question. Um, the question is, in relation to sports sponsorships, what level is the Southern Company continuing to um, donate to? Well, I mean, one of the um, challenges has been because sports, I mean, there are no fans. Uh, we are a big sponsor of the, of the PGA Tour and the Tour Championship here in Atlanta. We're, we're a sponsor of, of the Hawks and the Falcons and and the Braves and a lot of other things, as well as other other sports events across our territory. Uh, the the sponsorship proposition is a little different now than it was before. The value that was traditionally offered and provided is not the same level of value. So our investment and sponsorship, I think, uh, there must be adjustments and changes made that are commensurate with with the value that that's being afforded. Uh, we're not just going to say, I'm going to give you the same amount of dollars I've given you the past couple of years because conditions are different. Uh, there will not be 60,000 fans uh, in the, in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. We won't have 25,000 fans. We won't be hosting individuals at the Tour Championship in Atlanta. So as a result, yeah, we'll negotiate with sponsorships and we'll make necessary adjustments that reflect the, the, the value um, of, the, of the product and services that are, that, that are being provided. Uh, I mean, recognizing, yes, we're very, we're very proud and very, I mean, we, we're thrilled to have, say, the, the, the Tour Championship in Atlanta, which has the top 30, 30 golfers in the world come to Atlanta. I'm, I'd rather have them with more fans than not have them here. At the same time, uh, on behalf of the company, uh, it's important that as we make investments in, in these type of events, that we get a uh, return for our investments. And, and so, yeah, we'll reevaluate, re we'll renegotiate uh, with those organizations to decide what those sponsorship levels will be as we go forward. Okay, thanks. I have another question. Um, some of the nonprofits are asking what type of reports do they need to provide to the Southern Company during for for donations during this time with COVID and race relations? The obvious stuff. I mean, what are you doing? Who, who, who are you helped? I mean, what communities are you investing in? Who are you collaborating with? Who are you partnering with? Those kinds of things. Um, I mean, I think, I mean, we all, are, we all love our own independence. But how are you collaborating with others? I mean, what kind of difference are you making? And so I think those kind of things will be very, very helpful as we see your imagination and your, your creativity, but also your commitment to helping and making a difference and making conditions and lives better during this period. Yeah, we, we wanna see that, but I think 
uh, it's important to see your creativity and, and, and how you're making this work uh, during this period. Great. Um, another question that we have is that, um, what do you see with the current climate for the Southern Company when it comes to the job market for later on this year and going into 2021? Not good. Uh, like I said, because, I mean, you know, we're going through this period where, I mean, we look at business in, in kind of three, uh, three segments. There's residential, which is those of U.S. homeowners and, I mean, and then we look at commercial businesses, be it the McDonald's, the Chipotle's, and, and then the industrials, the, the big manufacturers, the, the Olin Chemicals, the International Papers, the, the big plants. And so you can imagine during the lockdown and shutdown, much of the commercial business, uh, there was not much there. And even uh, much of the industrial sector, I mean, as they were struggling with COVID and, and, and the coronavirus, much of them were shut down as well. So guess what? They're shut down. Guess what? They're not using. They're not using electricity. They're not, they're not, they're not, they're, there's no need for gas. So as a result, that's lower revenues for us. So yeah, we've had, we've had to make those adjustments and we're making those adjustments internally. So yeah, there will be probably some specific and individual roles and jobs um, that we will be hiring for. Uh, but I don't think there will be wholesale new job opportunities uh, for a little while, but there will be uh, a job here, a job there, some critical jobs that we'll need, uh, that we'll see uh, posted here and there. Uh, but if we keep an eye on our website where all of our uh, employment opportunities uh, are being made available. Okay, one more question. Um, besides the initiatives that you spoke about earlier, are there any other type of philanthropy initiatives that so other companies looking to sponsor? Um, I, I think the answer is probably not. At the same time, I think we're always open to, 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 uh, to different ideas. I think when, whether it's Southern Company or any other, any other business unit, we don't have unlimited resources, okay? I don't, we don't have enough money to solve the problem of education. We don't have enough money to solve the problem of challenges that HBCUs face today. We don't have enough resources to solve the problem of homelessness. So for us, the challenge becomes how do we take our dollar, how do we lever that against another dollar, turn that dollar into $10. And so it's taking the limited resources that we do have, making wise investments and be very focused, narrowly focused on certain areas and certain commitments and, 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 and conditions that, that we view very important to us. We have to stay very focused in our giving simply because it's not unlimited dollars, not unlimited budgets. And so I think we've got to look at how we get the maximum value, the maximum return, the maximum outcome for our investment. And that says being very focused, uh, being very committed to a few things rather than doing and giving a little bit to a lot of things. So that's kind of my focus. That's my thoughts about, about our giving strategy. And like I said, you're always open to, to some different things. Uh, always listen to, to new ideas, but I also think it's very important to be very disciplined and focus in your giving strategies, uh, particularly when, you're, when your resources are limited. I'm sorry, I missed two questions. The first one is how would um, listeners who are listening to this call right now, how would they get access to the scorecard that you talked about for the HBCUs? Uh, once we finalize it, uh, I'm sure we will clearly we'll demonstrate, we, we will post it on our website and I'm sure we'll also um, share it and communicate it um, across our, our footprint. Uh, so we'll make it available, uh, but I would say later, later on this year, um, just keep following our website and, and we'll, we'll make sure that it's, that it's posted there. We try to put a lot of things there on our website that we're doing around whether it's race or whether it's uh, around environment, climate change, uh, how we run our business, customer service, a lot of things. We try to make sure those things are there. So I'm sure we'll do the same thing uh, with this scorecard. Next question is that there's a lot of 
students that graduated from college this year with the middle of the pandemic, a recession and all that's going on, what advice do you have for the- Hey, stay engaged. stay engaged. I mean, um, it's, it's gotta be different because I mean, you can't necessarily go sit down and meet with people. Um, I mean, look at like, I mean, it's been interesting because as much of the economy that has been shut down, there's a lot of work that's being done and people are doing it remotely. And so companies are learning how to do things different and being just as productive as they were uh, as, in, as, as they worked before. So for new graduates, it's uh, identifying those companies, those organizations that you're very interested in, uh, observe and pay attention to their websites, uh, try to identify people inside those companies or their organizations that you, that you can connect with and use whether it's Zoom calls or team calls or Skypes or whatever, whatever technology you utilize, uh, still find ways to, in, uh, to communicate with individuals and companies that you want to join. Uh, I mean, some of you are big users of LinkedIn. Some of you are big Facebook users and posting everything on Instagram. Uh, use all those various channels uh, to find opportunities and just continue to network. Uh, to to identify possibilities, to, to identify opportunities. Uh, I still think you got to be, and it's probably a lot easier now because you can stay at home and and create this wonderful network opportunity for yourselves. So stay engaged, stay motivated, stay creative, uh, pursue things and look at things a little different, uh, but also just never give up. Now is not the time to give up. Let's keep trying. Let's keep working at it. Let's keep finding ways to, to achieve the objectives and, and the goals that we want for ourselves. Okay, I have one last question from someone. Um, with all that's going on now with a lot of the local school districts and a lot of the kids now um, doing virtual schooling, the question is, is the Southern Company um, participating or collaborating with any nonprofits to assist a lot of the parents who are you know, I guess now becoming teachers at home. I mean, clearly we're having conversations uh, with our own employees and making different resources and ideas and, 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 and other various resources online, webinars to help them with whatever condition they're facing, whether it's all of a sudden becoming teachers or helping them identify childcare resources, but also making sure that as we make decisions about when many of our employees return, keeping in mind the, 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 the personal conditions that many of our employees are in fact facing. Um, because um, we haven't decided, we haven't made a decision yet in terms of when we move to the next phase of our return to work process, whether it will be later this year or when that will happen, but we have to do that recognizing the conditions that that, that our employees are in fact facing, particularly from a child care, but also from an elder care standpoint. And so we've got to be flexible in terms of what we do and, and, and the conditions we make available to support the needs of our employees. So we've done that and we'll in fact continue to do that as we move through uh, this period that we're currently experiencing. All right. Well, uh, Mr. Womack, thank you so much again for uh, joining us. As you get your virtual round of applause, uh, I wanted to make sure that we uh, said specifically thank you so much for your time and for your candor. Uh, when you talk about the, the business unit adjustments and the things that you all are doing uh, internally and also focusing externally, uh, I think that information is very, very pertinent to uh, not just our network, but certainly those organizations that rely on uh, commitments and uh, certainly when it comes to your commitment to uh, what you spoke of, the, the journey around racial equity and also with making a difference. I think that uh, with the new commitments that you referenced, uh, with all of us being graduates of HBCUs, myself being FAMU, William being uh, Grambling and, and Otis being a Clark, uh, you know, that commitment of $50 million and having that conversation going forward regarding talent, regarding doubling down on those types of things, uh, it's very, very important. So thank you so much uh, for what you continue to do in advocating for that equity. Uh, and thank you for uh, your leadership and your role of many years 
uh, in what you've been able to do. Uh, I just wanted to remind our viewers uh, about uh, an exciting week of things that we've got coming up in addition to this conversation. We'll be joining, uh, as it relates to the topic of education, uh, an organization called Book Better Outcomes for Our Kids uh, for a virtual conversation related to uh, how school systems and other schools are adjusting uh, during COVID-19. And so that's gonna be this Thursday at uh, 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, and for the folks that are participating on this call, we'll be sure to uh, send the, the Zoom link for registration as uh, folks are interested in joining us on that particular event as well. Uh, Mr. Womack, were there any other uh, last, last remarks that you wanted to make uh, related to uh, the conversation today? No, thank you very much. Thank you guys for, for, for participating, for, for affording me the opportunity to communicate with you. Uh, let's all stay committed. Uh, let's all work hard to make a difference, uh, to, to push for the change we so desire. But more importantly, everybody, please, please, please stay safe. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, again, this has been the Lanier Leadership Series with Chris Fulmat, the Executive Vice President and President of External Affairs for the Southern Company. Thank you so much. Everyone enjoy the rest of their Tuesday and their week, and we'll see you soon.